Hey everybody, this is a popular one. We are in siphon land right now because we are doing a siphoning tutorial. Siphoning means that when you shoot somebody and you're low on health, then you're going to get that health. Now right now we're not very low on health, so I'm going to go to my alt account and hit my character here. All right, so we can see my shield going down and my health. Okay, so now that we've got that sorted out, we can then shoot the other player and we'll watch my health go up and my health go up even more. And then my shield start to go up and my shield go up and up and up until I'm full. And that's that. So this is the siphon effect that everybody really likes to talk about and request in siphon land. OK, before we get into it, once again, thank you all to the legends over on Patreon. You guys are the best. I really appreciate you being here. Go get the code over there if you just want to copy and paste like you do. All right, let's get into this. OK, we are inside of UEFN as per usual. I've got a little tiny town here called Siphon Land. All of these uh, models are from Kitbash, not sponsored, and I made Siphon Land in Blender, in case you're wondering how to do these kinds of things, where you make a little environment. I like an environment for my tutorials. We also have two spawners, spawner number one and spawner number two. That's it for devices other than, of course, our custom device, which we are always making called the Game Manager. If you don't know how to make a Game Manager versus custom device, there is a link in the description of a tutorial that will drag you all the way through that process. Kicking and screaming. All right, let's get into how we make this siphon effect. And it's really just done with verse and it's not that hard. OK, we have verse open. This is our game manager custom verse device. We have our two editables, which are the spawner devices. We need to be able to listen for the spawn event. So we have to put these in because we want to be able to do stuff with the players. OK, I've also got a constant here and this is my heal delay so that it doesn't just pop when you give health or shield. It gives a bit of a delay to give it. So it looks like it's giving it one at a time sort of thing. And we're doing a 0.1 per second delay on giving health or shield on begin runs. This is when our game starts on begin will run and we are just going to simply listen to the spawned event from the player spawners. And that function lives here. What you have to do if you want to do this kind of thing, this is very important, very useful. When a player spawns, we're going to get their fort character. Their fort character is their Fortnite character, which we can do lots of kinds of things on. One of the things we can do is subscribe to the damaged event and the damaged shield event. A lot of people forget this. They don't realize that the damaged event doesn't cover the shield getting damaged. It just covers the player getting damaged. So we're going to call two different functions on player damage and on shield damage. Now I've copied and pasted this in from the documentation because it's good reference. It's a good idea to do these kinds of things. If you want to know how to do this, just hold control mouse over things that you don't have any understanding of, like agent or get fort character or the fort character itself and click. And that will open up the Fortnite Digest verse usually. And this will get us all kinds of things inside of here that we can take a look at and what things do. So I've got that for the damage here. We have a target object. We have an amount float, which is the amount that the damage was done for the instigator, the person that did it and the source. So now let's take a look at the on player damage. So on player damaged is this function here. If you understand this, then you're going to understand the shield one because it's pretty much exactly the same. We get a damage result object when the on player damaged event happens. I've just called it DR for damage result. Then we're going to grab the fort character that was the target. So the person that was hit, we're going to grab their health and we're going to print that out because it's pretty useful to do logging. So I highly recommend you do logging in your code. So this is an example of that. We can use curly brackets to show a value that we have received from this. We're also going to show the damaged amount, which is going to be here again in curly brackets. And then we're going to grab the instigator. So the person that did the damage. So that is a game action instigator, which is the instigator of the damage result object. If this seems confusing, don't even worry about it. You really just need to do this thing. Um, there's a lot to it. But uh, once you just have sort of this copy and paste code going, it'd be good. So the instigating agent is an agent object, which is kind of like a player. And we're going to use the get instigator agent failable method on the instigator itself to grab that. And we're going to call it instigating agent. You can call this anything you want, but that's what I've called mine. And then we're going to get the fort character of that, because again, we need to grab their health and give health later. 
So we got their current health here. So what is their health? And then we can print that as well. These things are important. So the current health of this player is this amount. And the current health of the player that got hit is this amount. And then we're going to do a function called do siphon. OK, so we're going to cover that in just a second. Don't worry. Heal player is something that gets called after do siphon. So we're going to cover that in a second. And we'll take a look at the on shield damage. You'll see if you look at this code, it's the exact same code as the heal, other than we're getting the shield from the fort character, not the health. So being able to grab these different things from the fort character is pretty useful. And we'll call do siphon there as well. We also have a fix shield uh, function, which is kind of like the heal player function, except it works on the shield. We'll cover these in a sec. Down to do siphon. OK, so when we get hit, we have our health taken away and the other player is going to get that amount of health. So we do that by calling do siphon here and we're going to pass in the player and the amount that they should get. So this is the player that did the shooting, made the hits, and this is the amount they hit for. And that's what we've set up inside of these two functions, one here and one here. So then we're going to grab the current shield and current health of that player, see which one we need to work on. If they have enough health, don't worry about it. We don't need to heal them. Go fix the shield if it needs fixing. So we're going to check their health to see if they're below 100. If so, then heal that up. And if not, then maybe they need their shield fixed. Go heal that. We could actually do a check really quickly here if current shield is less than 100.0 because it's a float, then we can do all of this like that. Make sure your tabbing is correct when you do changes like this. So that's some little bit of code on the fly. Usually I don't do that. So we can we can see how much the shield is down and then we're going to spawn because we're going to use a delay to make a function run asynchronously to fix the shield on this player for this amount. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit cooler, you would find out how much their health is, find out the difference between that and 100. And then if the amount here is more than what that difference is, then you can pass over the rest to the other side. So we're going to get we're going to heal up their health. Say, for example, they lost 20 health, but they hit for 50. They would have 30 left over. We would want to hand that over to the shield. So you could do that little bit there, but I didn't. Bother. OK, so let's take a look at the two functions that are essentially the same thing other than one works on health and the other one works on shield. So I'll just cover one. So we're going to cover heal player. And we're going to heal the player. It's a fort character object. And then we're going to heal this amount, which is a float. Float just means it's got a decimal point. Ints have no decimal. So we're going to keep track of the healed amount because we don't want to go over this amount. We want to just heal the right amount. We're going to do a loop. Loops are really, really important. I'm going to cover these in a basics averse tutorial coming soon. And that is essentially going to run this until we break these two points here when we break. We're going to break when their health is at 100 because we don't need to go any further. We're all done. And we're going to grab their current health, check that if it's at 100 break. If not, then heal the amount plus one plus equals one. So we're going to add on one to heal the amount, which was set up here. Then we're going to set the new health of the player, which also is a float current health plus one, which is this. And then we're going to set their health to that. So if they had 50, as we go through this loop, we're going to add one and then another and then another. And that's going to add on to their health. So we're always going to be grabbing their current health because we get that here. So if they get one, then their new health is 51 and then they get another one, it's 52. And then we're going to sleep that for 0.1 of a second, which was a constant right up here. It's very useful to actually make constants like this. So if you decided you wanted to go faster, you wanted a power up of some sorts that made healing even faster, you could just multiply the heal delay by something instead of having to go in here and try to change it up, put an if statement in and all that kind of stuff. You could just multiply it by one or 1.5 or whatever. And then the heal delay would be slower or faster kind of thing. And that's it. <laughs> The shield is the same thing. The fixing the shield is the exact same method, same way of doing things, other than we are getting the shield and then we are setting the shield on the fort character. So that's all the code you need to know to make the siphon effect. It works really well. Hopefully that's been interesting. If you have any questions, hit me up below. If not, I'll see you guys in the next one.